I do want to put tomorrow's Game 5 into historical context for you guys. This is the 30th instance in which the NBA Finals have been tied in two games apiece. Now, over the previous 29 instances, that's very good odds, friends. The team that won Game 5 has won the series 72% of the time. So, Richard, knowing how important this game is, what adjustments do the Suns need to make after losing two straight? I, I don't really think the Suns need to make too many adjustments. I think they just need some slight tweaks. But ultimately, we've seen, look, if DeAndre if DeAndre Aiden stays out of foul trouble, if Chris Paul doesn't have one of his historically bad right. postseason, I think the Phoenix Suns win that game. Like you saw, they, they turned the ball over 17 times. They shot 40% and they barely lost. So right. I don't think they need to change too much. I do. I think they need to find a swagger and get their tenacity back, right? Turnovers, but offensive rebounds. I think That's DeAndre Aiden, yeah. right, DeAndre Aiden has to do a better job like he did in game one and game two, controlling the paint, grabbing every single rebound. I believe in game one he had 19 rebounds. And then he has a, he has to do a better job of actually anchoring the defense up, right? Like getting in there, guarding the pick and roll, defending Giannis at the rim without fouling like we talked about. But the Phoenix Suns are going to play better at home, right? You think about Mikael Bridges. He struggled on the road. We know game two, he had a, a breakout performance with 27 points. We know Cam Johnson's going to play better. All the stars, even Devin Booker with Chris Paul and CP3, they're going to play better at home. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I agree that there's not any big tactical adjustment. They made the tactical adjustment in game four, mm -hmm. and it largely worked in terms of their Giannis problem, right? Giannis didn't go for 40-plus again. But when you guys say DeAndre Ayton has to stay out of foul trouble, when you say Devin Booker has to stay out of foul trouble, it's easier said than done, yes. right? I mean, it's not really completely up to them. You can be more careful. You can be more disciplined. But the bottom line is, this Suns roster is thin. They yeah. have definitely had injuries throughout these playoffs, and Dario Saric going down after game one with that torn ACL means there's no wiggle room for DeAndre yeah. Ayton. There's no one really to be able to pick up that slack for him. Yeah, but Rachel, if you look at some of uh, Aiden's and, and Devin Booker fouls, uh -huh. they're dumb fouls. Like, no, no, yeah, no, you, no they are. It's fouls that you can stay away from. Like, if I'm Monty Williams, I'm going to drill these plays mm -hmm. in film session and say, look, stay away from these type of fouls. Like, even Devin Booker, some of those fouls he get, I'm like, why? Yeah. Yeah. Like, a foul why that you... wasn't a foul that really was a foul yeah. right yeah. at the end of the game. That was just a mental. He was going to wrap the guy up to foul on purpose. And, and, and one thing you can do to help avoid this, like a, a coaching tweak, is take, I know you want to end quarters great, but take your guys out with 30 seconds. Take your guys out with 45 seconds to end the quarters so they don't pick up a little foul with 20 seconds to go unnecessarily. So you take eight and out with 35 seconds to go in the first quarter. So then it's just like, okay, because this is going to be a possession basketball game. They're going to go to somebody specifically. So that's one way that a coach can limit the, uh, the exposure to some of his stars in like little bitty 30 second increments. What are the things that you've heard coaches say in locker rooms or that you've told younger teammates to say, cut down on the turnovers, friend? Well, it's, it's just value in the basketball. I mean, don't try to get outside of your character. Don't make the home run play, right? So many times guys want to make the pass that lead into the shot or they try to do too much. Just simplify the game. Just be who you are. And that's what you, I mean, that's my advice. Yeah, and when you think about the way the Phoenix Suns play basketball, they move it, pop, 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 pops, which you might think that would lead to more turnovers, but it's because they don't play in congestion. Right. They get the ball to the open person and then that person makes the play and makes that .5 second decision. Yep. It's when you're holding on to it, mm -hmm. you're trying to do too much, that's what they have to dial back because it wasn't just Chris Paul. No. Four guys had three or more turnovers, so that was the whole team. Yeah, and it's that point five is, is the offense that Monty Williams has been preaching, that in half a second, you want to make a decision. Drive, pass, shoot, and that way, as you guys have been saying all week, the ball moves faster than the defenders, right? Because mm -hmm. people can't move as fast as a basketball can. I want to move on to the other side, and Chris Middleton, guys, after that 40-point outburst Ooh. in game four, Perk, is it fair to trust him as the series shifts back here to Phoenix in game five? He's had some good road games certainly this playoffs he had one in Atlanta that was fantastic but then there's also been a lot of road games he's been quiet yeah but why wouldn't you trust money making Middleton okay for the simple fact that I know everyone is talking about his his struggles on the road in in in, in the finals but game one 
he had 29 points. Yeah. I think when it, when it comes down to Chris Middleton, he just has to be aggressive. He had 29 points, but he took 26 shots. In game four, he had 40 points, and he took 33 shots. I don't care. Empty out the clip. That's what I feel like. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like Chris Middleton takes a back seat, mm -hmm. and he waits to see what Giannis is going to yeah. do or Drew Holiday is going to do when the front office, I was on the plane last night when one of the guys from the front office, and they're telling Chris Middleton, shoot the ball, be aggressive, be who you are. And if he, if he does that from the start, then he's going to come out and have a good game. Well, and, and that part, like you talk about being harder than you think, the reason why that's so difficult is because Chris Middleton is an extremely efficient player. Yes. He is a 50-40-90 guy. And if you're a 50-40-90 guy, either your ability is off the chart or you kind of have it registered in your head. You miss a couple shots, you slow down. Sure. You get a little tentative. Or you were like, oh, I miss a three, let me go get a bucket. So that's where it's like, to Perk's point, you can go have 29, you can go have 29 points on 26 shots. Mm -hmm. That is not something that he's used to doing, but they want more of that. They right. want that overly aggressive Chris Middleton. Yeah, now those home and road numbers were interesting that they just put up there. Uh, look, I, he's such a steady guy to me, his personality. Mm -hmm. I never see him looking rattled on the road. Mm. Like, some guys don't play well on the road because they just, you can see them getting their heads from the crowd. I never feel like that with Chris. I no. think it's more of him feeling out games and but that's all a of that. Big, that's a big difference. And for especially for a guy you consider to be a star. He's about sure. to be on the U.S. Olympic team. Yep. He's got multiple all stars Stars. Like, this is what you like. You expect a little bit closer. The three point percentage sticks out, right? The field goal percentage and that plus minus, which I know is not a be all end all stat, but when you do it over a string of games, it t tends to be more accurate. And they don't have home court, right? They do not so have They home have court to win a series. game on the road. They that is the key do. thing. Yes. But, but then when you look at those numbers, and especially in the finals, we got to also realize that. I want to know how many minutes he played because you remember the game one and game two were blowouts. Yep. So, you know, those minutes weren't really there. Like, it wasn't meaningful minutes yes, like, like it was in game four. Yep. Well, they will have to win a game in this building. The Milwaukee Bucks will, if they want to win a title, we will see if it's tomorrow night and if Chris Middleton can be a main factor there. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.